Pam bam bam, palam bam bam bam, pili pili, bam 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 bam, palam bum bam bam, padi, bailam bam, pam bali dali dilem blum blam blam pili, ali dilai le dilam pum tadle dilem blum blam blam pili. It's a living vibration rooted deep within my Caribbean belly. Lyrics to make a politician cringe or turn a woman's body into jelly. It's a sweet soca music. You could never refuse it. It make you shake like a shango. And why the hell you shaking you don't know, Calypso music. <laughs> It was a bacchanal, 1950 carnival. Fight for show with invaders and Tokyo. My friend run and left his hat. When they hit him a baseball hat, I have to explain. Still band don't have no riot again. <laughs> Start belting. If you see sleds passing, husband and wife look they start running for the life. A Indian man selling bread, shout out, lad, today are dead, never me again. The jump in a seal man is for the spin. Hey! Da, 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 da. Calypso to me is dear to my heart. After God, my wife, Calypso. Every song that they make in America is about love, but we sing from politics to sport, to science, to whatever, education, it is recorded in Calypso. I consider the Kaisonian as the old African storyteller. You know that guy will go from village to village just spreading the word, and the old African storyteller is just the man that's supposed to go around and keep the good works and the deeds of your heroes alive. Calypsonian is a poor man newspaper. A Calypsonian is the person to tell the, the, peop, the people spokesman, so to speak. He is to let the people know what time is it, what going on behind their back. Then a good Calypso is timely and timeless, meaning that it comes right in the nick of time. Calypso is not just a, a, a Caribbean thing. You know, it is a Caribbean music, but it's not ours to own. Music is to be shared for the world. When Americans say about Calypso, they always say Harry Belafonte. No, Harry Belafonte, people in Trinidad don't know him as, as no Calypsonian. The real roots of Calypso is right here. I see the Calypsonian as a concerned villager. A person who would like to see his village improve. I am like a river overflowing its bank. You try to stop me, I'm going to find room to pass. So it has a rhythm unto itself alone. It has a native beat, a doo-doo, a doo-doo, all or very old. It's a way of life, a way of love. From centuries ago, our folk art, I know, must be Calypso. I born a Calypsonian. <laughs> Calypsonian do be good looking people. <laughs> so yeah. How are you good looking? No, I say they do be good looking people. Oh. But you're just lucky to be one. <laughs> hey, Ame. Fosuke ame, eh ame, Fosuke ame. It was a cry of the slaves. 
That's how Kaiso all started. When the slaves wanted to sing on the master in their tongue, they composed their own little things about the master and sang it. And that's how the composition of Calypso began. It was out of a struggle. We look at um, the experience through plantation slavery and, and Calypso as an art that, that helped the keep a people and keep their soul together. And it was only through the Calypso that the people, especially the African population, was able to articulate um, the concerns and the, the, the views and the opinions about how the life was going, how the country should be run, um, how things affect them in, in, in personal ways. So Calypso was that, always that art form to express um, the, the, the political angle as, as relating to life. When I was a little fella, growing in my parents' place, I used to see a lot of supper. I had to bow and see me grace. But today, we got some little fella, my friend, they don't know their place. You will see I am walking up and down the street and casting in front of me. Oh, like if you're walking in the dark, like if you're walking in the dark. As long as my people respect for man, I know to catch good hell in this land. Oh, like like if you walk in, as long as not no respect for man, I know the good hell in this land. The evidence shows that the Calypso harks back to the West African griot singing, whereby people commented on their situations, they commented on, on their experiences, on their hopes, their aspirations, and the very same thing the griots did in West Africa, we in Trinidad do it. So raise your head, Mr. African, raise your head. Corrupted elements plotting while you in bed. Oh yeah. Raise your head, Mr. African, raise your head. Wake up, shake up, the dreadful times are ahead. Remember Steve Baco? He died in jail, you know. He fought them oppressors, fakes and brutal murderers. Now they raise in sanction, but won't like recuperation. Look, it's time to see that all Africans are free. So raise your hand, Mr. African, raise your hand. Destructive elements plotting while you in bed. Oh, yeah. Raise your hand, Mr. African, raise up your hand. Wake up, shake up, the dreadful times are ahead. The mighty Duke said about Caribs the music that it's an editorial in song that describes our life and times. And um, I feel that this art form is the most unique in the sense that, um, you know, I know of no other place where people can um, talk about their mayor, their neighbor, the prime minister. So then I try to sell it in Chen. An accident policy. I say, Eden, let Carlos pave the savannah. Let him pave the whole city. Eden Chan born up in the savannah to stop the paving. Lie down on the grass. A truck with hot sun. Nearly bury mother. Accident will happen. You take that from me. To me, the uniqueness of Calypso is that it's the freest form of music in the world. Freest, anything can happen in Calypso. A Calypso is every man's opinion. So if you go to a Calypso tent and you tell each Calypso you want to write about the war in the Middle East, you'll hear 20 different opinions, 20 different styles, 20 different rhythmic patterns. Saddam Hussein will get killed by a bomb. What? In time to come, in time to come, in time to come, a lie, in time to come. Moving from the dark ages, man has progressed in stages, through the stone and iron age, till we turn another page. And we saw the adventures of Alexander. When you talk about masking and calypso, 
uh, it's that's a, it's a good example because everybody sings rum and coca cola way down point kumana both mother and daughter working for the yankee dollar everybody sees the rum everybody sees the coca cola but very few people see both mother and daughter working for the yankee dollar Yankees came to train their dad. They had all the young girls growing mad. But the only Yankees gone back home. Train their dad, they went in the road. They want the rum and Coca Cola. Go down point to Mana. Both mother and daughter. Looking for the Yankee dollar. That was the Calypso of long ago. Coming from Trinidad and Tobago. But now the Yankees gone back home. Trinidad women begin to roam. They want the rum and Coca Cola. Going down point to Mana. Both mother and daughter working for the Yankees. He's singing therefore about while people drinking rum and Coca Cola and having a good time, Americanism is breaking up the family life of our people. Both mother and daughter working for the Yankee dollar. He's singing a prostitution. The root and the soul of Calypso would always be um, the voice of the people. It would always be an art form that would um, paint a picture and tell a story and, and you know, establish um, documents of history for our people and, and for humanity in general. Trinidad is my land. And of it I am proud and glad But I can't understand Why some people just talk it bad But I know All of them who run in the mouth They don't know what they're talking about They would paint it black every day And the right things they would never say Like our sportsman it is great, it's one of its best. Our scholars have sit and pass every test and put us out alongside the rest. And then our pitch lake is the greatest one of its kind. Our sugar and oil is really refined. So you see, friends, this is a real King Solomon's mind. The challenge is to find these new ways to turn the lyric. If I have to make a reference, and maybe I say Bob Dylan will probably qualify as a Calypsonian because he has a way he can turn the lyric. Well, the girls in town feeling bad. No more Yankees in Trinidad. They're going to close down the base for good. Them girls have to make out how they could. Hey, brother, is now they park up in town. In for a penny and in for a pound. Believe me, it's competition for so. Trouble in the tongue and the price drop low. So when you bounce up, Jean and Dinah, Rosita and Clementina, round the corner posing. Bet your life is something they're selling. And if you catch them broken, you can get them all for nothing. Don't make a row. I say the Yankees gone and Sparrow take over. Oh, come. <laughs> It's the glamour boys again. We are going to rule Port of Spain. No more Yankee to spoil the fet. Dorothy had to take where she get. All of them who used to make style, taking two shillings with a smile. No more hotel to rest your head by the sweat of thy brow. Thou shall eat bread. Mama, you, Jean and Dinah, Rosita and Clementina. And she, Mama, round the corner, posing. Bet your life is something is telling. <laughs> and if you catch them broken, you can get them all for nothing. Don't make a row. I want to hear the Yankees burn a sparrow take over now. Rosita, Clementina. Shut up and do the 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 Yankees 
life today yeah. on like yesterday Whoa. friendship gone yeah. leaving hate and scorn Whoa. neighbor living like stranger with neighbor no love sir no love sir for one another to unite people as one i create a song i hope it'll live on from generation to generation to generation Shanti Om Shanti Shanti Om Trinidad is a colony, a melting pot of race and religion. Whether you're Hindu, Christian, Muslim, whatever, you hear all these influences in the Calypso. Early Sunday morning, I was strolling long down. Yes, I met this charming religious woman. She was shining in the morning light, dressed all in white, confessing she loved my voice, not my songs of choice. She tell me, you want to make a hit record, yes, you want to make a hit record? Well, if you want to make a hit record, you got to sing for the Lord, she tell me. You want to make a hit record, yes. You want to make a hit record, well, I know you want to make a hit record, you got to sing for the Lord, she tell me. Sing for the Lord, hey. Sing for the Lord, yeah, yeah. Sing for the Lord, amen. Sing it louder, sing for the Lord. She tell me, sing for the Lord, yeah, yeah. Sing for the Lord, amen, amen. Everybody could ding Gali because music is for everybody. I mean, um, gold, some people have gold and some people don't have no gold. Some people hear about diamonds, but they never see any diamonds, you know. But music, as long as you could hear music, music is yours. Music is very, very special. Only brothers. And the sisters from various sections who are drinking, smoking something, <laughs> is peace and love in the band. Tell me what they're smoking. No kind of decency. I know that. And we praising Marcus Garvey and we chanting as mass is is a high mass is real class we play with Jaja no panty neither no whiskey just feel free everybody sing it sing it Rasmus is a high mass is real class we play with Jaja Our expression of the blues is different. Um, if you go to say Jamaica or the States or wherever you ha you find the blues tells you like, you know, life is hard. Life is so hard. And the Trinidad expression is <laughs> life is hard. You know, <laughs> you know. But it's the same. It's, it's just that we do it with a laugh, and the laugh fools people. But under the laugh is is a blade, always a blade. But if somebody had have a hole. <laughs> and they need a charitable soul. <laughs> well, I'm the first one, the asking to sing. You know why, man? Because I'm the free show. Okay, so king. <laughs> when you ask you, my dear Kaiso, you see, you. you your on seriousness. That was that, that why I was doing that just a while ago. I was singing a serious song. But when you put a, when you add humor into it, and you you see you, you capture the whole audience. You capture the person who listens seriously, and you make that same person laugh. You make that same person relax 
under under the gun. You know, <laughs> you, when you do that, you know, you're trying, you, you, you want to win the crown. <laughs> I was told about this young fella who had a song about sticking the jelly. Yeah. Pick... <laughs> <laughs> he was joking some, yeah. somebody up a tree. <laughs> and I liked the song and I made sure that they introduced me to him. I can't remember, I think it was what the, the China Clipper restaurant or someplace. You know, we got uh -huh. to know each other. But um, he made a hit before me. He made a hit. Everybody had liked this. He took it. What's he going on? He took it. He took it. Ali. Let me see if I remember the piece about 1954. A lady had an estate up in Lavanti with coconuts in a quantity. She ah, had this estate up in Lavanti with coconuts in a quantity. Well, I heard how the tree's so high. Mm. You cannot pick no matter how you try. Yes. So I wait until the lady sleeping. That I get the rod and I start trying. I said, I'm going to chuck this rod high, high up. And somehow, uh, it must reach the tree top. I'll push it high up on the tree. And somehow, I'm bound to win the jelly. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, with a song like that, I got to be the guy. I got to be the guy. <laughs> Some Calypsonians choose the name of Subrike because they want people to be fearful of them. A fellow might have come up there and his name is Tiger. And the next fellow named Lion. Lion. So when you hear these names... And then they have another one named Zebra. So when you hear these names, you hold, your, you hold your chair and your wife and your whole time. The Subrike in Calypso is like an English judge. The English judge wears his wig. And he wears his wig to tell you that if I condemn you to death, it is not me who has condemned you to death, it's the wig has condemned you. It's what I represent. And so the sobriquet in Calypso came from angry laughing men. They laughed, but they were angry inside. And they were telling you that when I come on stage, it is not me, whatever my name is, John Thomas, it is what I represent. My sobriquet as an artist in the Calypso is Brother Valentino. That name was given to me by the great grandmaster, this is Lord Kitchener. One day I was going to Martinique and he saw me and he said, you are the little boy who won the Calypso competition at the Queen's Park Savannah. And I said, yes, I am. And he said, well, you drop a bomb on them, they should call you a bomber. Because we want peace in the world. For you and me, peace in the world. Well, everybody has a conflict we'll never see until we begin world peace. When Prowler was a little man, could be about 10 or 12 years, <laughs> Prowler used to come around the young brigade tent on Duke Street in a short pants, and he uses to be prowling around the fence to, to see if he can get a break to get in. But so small, the older Calypsonian didn't want him at that hour of the night <laughs> to be around the tent, right? Like kitchen Marble. Then I used to pinch marble, and I'm the dexterous, pinching any hand. And I had a, a fellow named Shabalong. He was the best pitcher we had done with Shabal Tree. So I always say now, you, you call him the king. So they say, I'm a pretender to your throne, I would think. I used to mark, I had a hat, mark pretend on my hat. And it stopped so, the day that I saw name it, it stopped with me from pitching marble to Kai. So when I realized that Sparrow is going to be stuck, that's my name. I added mighty to it, because there's nothing like a mighty Sparrow. Sparrow is a poor, humble little bird, and I decided I'm going to be poor and humble all the days of my life, and put a mighty to it and confuse everybody. The mighty, mighty. You know, you really can't talk about Calypso without talking about my dear friends, Lord Melody, Mighty Spoiler, and the Grandmaster, Lord Kitchener. I think Lord Kitchener was the greatest Calypsonian ever lived. What I, what I love about Kitchener was his simplicity in choosing words, his melodies, lyrically, his storylines, everything was perfect, perfect, perfect. 
<laughs> well, Kitchener, I used to admire Kitchener, the, the melodies and the way he put his words together. Kitchener only got little words, though, and rhyme it. Take any word and make it rhyme. And it, yeah, he got something else. There's no Calypsonian alive. I mean, talking about the real Calypsonians whom Kitchener has, hasn't touched. Lord Kitchener, now I'm told that you are really the king of Calypso singers, is that right? Yes, that's well, so true. Will you sing for us? Right now. Yes. London is the place for me. London, this lovely city. You can go to France or America, India, Asia or Australia, but you must come back to London City. Kitch, what could I say? He was my friend, he assisted me Calypso-wise, he assisted me financially. When things were down, he would bring things for me, put it in his car, drive up here, blow his horn. I was so familiar with the horn, I said, ah, catch outside. And with more unity, we will live happily. Lovely West Africa, land of gold and silver, that's why I'm Africa, 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 Tell Doctor Inkruma, this is Lord Kitchener. We send our love to Africa. Me and Roy and Kara, that's why I want to come back home. Africa, girl, I'm tired, bro. Africa, girl, I want to come back home. I'm not ashamed to say he brought food for me, talking about rice for sugar, butter, onion, you know, cheese, cooking oil and everything. He used to do that for me. We were great friends. Carnival is nice. Carnival is sweet. I don't mind she take, she jump, but leave me something to eat. Whenever she come, Lord, that is Bacchanal. She go tell me who she want between me and Carnival. I order in licks, well it's leather all in she face. Kick she out my house, like Carnival find she a place. All I hear she jumping up inside her van. Oh Lord, she buys her drop, I understand. Everybody have to say, how oh, they see she didn't go late. And she big in soul, like a ten year old. Mama, yo, she wind down, down. She get on bad. Oh Lord, she busy down. She must be mad. She hear the beat of a steel band and the simple song of a horn. Where she go? She leave the pot and the fire, and she go. I used to rent a bass when Kitchener come to New York, go down 48th Street, and rent an upright bass just to bring kitchen in a, in a particular restaurant, wherever I'm working, to jam that bass. And he had such a personality on that bass. People used to go crazy just to see kitchen play that bass, you know. When we were both young. <laughs> Nobody does it better than Kitchener. A genius, a legend. He is the grandmaster. Here is a man with a plan. Who fully understand it formula for pan? The man could make tune for the pan. That's right. The history of Lord Kitchener will tell you a great composer, social commentator, musician, hero, professor, a natural leader, tentona teacher, and tutor. Panorama, always a great contributor. For a melody sweet and rich, you can always count on Kitch. Is what I call a musical sketch. He is something else, the man in a class by himself. So put him on the top shelf. Put him on the top shelf. Voices. Voices. No one does it like Kitch. A genius, a legend, he is the grandmaster. Here is a man with a plan, who fully understands.